What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and after a disappointing Saturday night, we get to Sunday morning, boys! Come on! Classy. So, yeah, 2-0 win over Everton at Stamford Bridge. Uh, just another way for us to say the Burnley match was just a fluke. We're not done this season. We are not going to have another bad season like we did the last time we won the trophy. We are here to challenge for it. Obviously, the fact that, man, you are on, off to such a great start means we are still playing catch-up. But I think these past two results show that we are still the team that we were last season. Maybe some fine-tuning to do. Like I said, we still don't have the the backup required to really challenge in all four of the tournaments this season. Uh, well, the three tournaments and then the league. But I still think, based on what we've got right now, we can still do fairly well. We can still challenge fairly well overall. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, interesting lineup to, to kick it off. You know, Fabregas returns after being suspended last match. Rudiger stays in the back line with Espilio Cueta and David Luiz in as well. And then Pedro makes his return with William and Murata still holding up top. So, really good lineup in my opinion. Probably looking something like what the main lineup will look like once Hazard returns. Probably either Pedro or William on the bench. Depends on who's playing better at the time. But I think this is probably going to be our main starting lineup for now. Now, if Bakayoko can get up to full fitness and can pass as well as Fabregas does or can hold it down even better than Fabregas does... It depends on what he can bring. You know, if we need to hold down the midfield, if we need a big body in there who's going to rough some people up like he did against Tottenham, he'll probably start those games. But if we need somebody like Fabregas who's going to cut the defense apart, Fabregas will probably play. But either way, I'm pretty sure they're going to play alongside Conte. So this it's a good midfield lineup. Um, and then the back line, I do expect this to be our back three for most of the season. I think Rudiger has shown over the past three games he's a solid center back. He can do just what Cahill can do, but probably a bit better. Uh, now, can he win balls in the air? Can he win balls for corners and score like Cahill can? I don't know. We'll have to see. But just seeing the defensive work he does, it makes me think that even though Cahill does return uh, next game, no, he's got one more game suspension, then he'll return. Even though he does return after the next game, I still just look at Rudiger and say I'd prefer to have him in. And the other thing that might happen is there might be a possibility of putting Cahill and Rudiger in and then Spilly Coita out to the right. Like I said last game, that doesn't work. You know, having a Spilly Coita in the back three is pretty much a must at this point. You know, if you're going to play maybe a lesser team and want to do them out there, yeah, that might work out. But I just, I look at what he does back there. I look at the pressure he puts on, the sort of, I guess, calmness he brings to the back line knowing that he's back there. I can't imagine having him anywhere else on the field. I just think that he's allowed to do so much more back there than he is when he's stuck over on the right side and has to get up and down and try to cross in. And Anyway, let's talk about individual performances. Um, first of all, Courtois and goal didn't have anything to do. And this also kind of plays into the fact that while we did dominate the game, while we did look really good playing, you know, we controlled the game throughout, to be honest, Everton really didn't do much to threaten, and part of that may have been because of their Thursday game. You know, maybe some of them were still tired. I think a big part of it was Sandro up top was just completely useless for the entire game. Uh, Calvert Lewin, when he came in, and then Lennon came in later, they provided a bit more pace and I guess aggression up top. So they did start to actually put some shots in, but <clears throat> they had no shots on goals. So Courtois literally had nothing to do but deal with some passbacks. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much a bystander. I'd say probably tomorrow, while everybody else is maybe getting some recovery done, I'd say Courtois probably should be training. Uh, into the back line, though, you look at the back three, Rudiger, David Luis, Espili Cueta. Like I said, pretty much probably going to be our back three because all of them look very solid today. Rudiger, I don't think, had a misstep. Uh, maybe a couple of his passes were a little bit scary. But, you know, they all went through. He hardly gave the ball away. He even put in a couple of good long balls that were 
they were able to deal with pretty well. And defensively, he's strong and fast, so not much more you can ask from uh, from him. David Luis, on the other hand, while defensively he looked okay, his long balls really have got to stop. Um, I've said this before in the past two games, and it happened again today. It's returning to the David Luis that we sold for $50 million that I was excited to get rid of because he just gives the ball away sometimes way too cheaply. Um, there, there are moments where we just need to keep possession. We need to try to work the ball down the field. And he picks his head up. He's like, oh, there's a guy wide open. Sends it to him. It's out of bounds. Or it's to a defender. Or it's too long to the goalkeeper. So they're not coming off this season, and he's still trying them five or six times a game. You just you got to stop. you got to realize, okay, this isn't working for me. I tried it by one time. It didn't come off. I'm done. Trying to just move the ball around, keep possession, not trying to force it. And then it's Billy Coita. Um, a couple times they get drawn out of position trying to do too much defensively. And I, I have talked about this before, how sometimes he almost tries to overdo it to the point where he goes flying into a challenge when all he just needs to do is stand him up. Um, and you know he, that hurt him a couple times in the Tottenham game. But today, because there wasn't a whole lot of speed and aggression up top for Everton, it didn't really affect him. So he was able to get drawn out of position a couple times, but still managed to recover well enough. Uh, but yeah, his work ethic is just incredible. The the cover that he provides for the other two when the ball's on the other side of the field is incredible. And just the fact that, you know, he is a smaller defender. You know, when you think about defenders, most of them are six foot or taller, you know, able to win the ball out of the air. That's what you expect out of your defenders. He is not one of those defenders, and yet he's still one of our, if not our best defender. You know, he's just very strong, very quick. So really enjoy seeing him play. Moses and Alonzo on the wingbacks. Uh, Moses was pretty effective today. He had to go up against Leighton Baines, who's not as quick as he is, so <clears throat> he did manage to get past him quite a few times. His delivery into the box, though, needs a bit of work. You know, it just wasn't good enough. There are too many times where it feels like it should lead to a chance, but then it's a bad cross or a bad shot or it's out of bounds. Just too many times where that's happening. And whenever we're going up against a better team and we're not already two goals up, we need those crosses, those deliverances to be better because we can't rely on you know, other people to score most of the time. Sometimes it's got to be you stepping up. So that, that's my only complaint. Obviously today it didn't matter. Like I said, we were already 2 nothing up by the time his crosses were poor. But in other games where we're not already 2 up, when we're, we need somebody to get the job done, he really needs to step up in those games and make sure that his passes, his crosses are a lot better. Uh, but his work today, defensively attacking, you know, getting up and down the line was really good. Alonzo, obviously, <laughs> after last week, he had a lot to live up to. You know, can he produce what he did last week? He didn't, but he was still very solid. And he's still working very hard. He's still doing well to get back and defend as well as get up and help out in the attack. Uh, I mean, I've been really impressed with him so far. He's a player that I didn't rate very highly at the end of the last season. You know, he had some good moments during our 13-game unbeaten run, or winning streak, actually. He had some good games then, but then kind of dropped off as the season went along. So far, he's started off very, very well. You know, very fast, very quick, moves the ball around well, gets up and down the line very well. So, yeah, I've been very impressed with him, and today was no different. He just wasn't as effective or wasn't as involved as he was against Tottenham. Uh, and then in the midfield, like I said, Conte and Fabregas. Conte doing what he always does, being a good breaker up of the play, doing a very good job of being quick and putting pressure on somebody. Uh, whenever he wins the ball back, does very well to sort of keep possession. Don't really have any complaints there. Uh, Fabregas also played very well. You know, got a good goal, <laughs> good little interchange between him and Murata. Uh Just very solid in the midfield. He's still... He's still got some work to do when it comes to, I guess, the quickness of it because Everton today weren't really putting a lot of pressure on him, and so he did have a lot of time to play. However, in the second half, things started to pick up the pace, and he was still playing at the same pace as he was in the first half. So the second half was kind of a little bit of a... It wasn't really scary. They never really got a truly good chance, but our play really dropped off while they started stepping up a bit, and so... We stopped dominating the game as much. Uh, and Fabregas was one of those players who, in the first half, you know, was doing well to move the ball around, making some great passes, moving, creating some great plays. And then second half, the play picked up the speed, and <laughs> he's still doing the same thing he was in the first half. 
So the the pace definitely needs to pick up for him, but that's something that I think I was saying last season as well. That pace just isn't something that's a part of his game. So hopefully he can get better at it, but you know, as long as he can continue to create and assist and score, that's fine. Up into the front three, Pedro, William, and Murata. Uh Pedro had kind of a, I guess, a typical Pedro game for him, just without the goal. So I was frustrated with him for most of the game. You know, some stupid shots, selfish play at times. Sometimes his passes are just, he's trying to force it, or it should be an easy pass, and for some reason it's right to the defender. I don't know. He's, he's a player that typically makes quite a few mistakes, but he'll pop up with a goal that's just out of nowhere and all of a sudden puts us ahead, and so I can forgive most of those mistakes. But today, didn't get in a goal, didn't get an assist. It, there's a problem there. So he's got to start producing if he wants to continue to be this kind of selfish but creative player because, uh, I mean, that's, that's just what those type of players are. They typically are very selfish, but it's because they're going to get a goal. It's because they're going to do well. That, that wasn't today. Uh, Willie, on the other hand, though, he's a bit more selfish, but he can pop up with good moments of interchange, you know, good moments where he's sending in a good cross or the pass, the one-two passes there, he plays it very well. So where Pedro is more selfish trying to look for a goal, William is more selfish and he just wants to dribble into space and then send in the cross. So they're very two, two different selfish players, but I think Williams is a lot more for the team, whereas Pedro is kind of more for himself. Um, not that I dislike him or anything, but I really do get frustrated with him sometimes. Uh, but William, good cross that leads to the Murata goal. Uh, very similar to the one that he sent in for the, the first goal against Burnley. So, yeah. In my opinion, William had a pretty good game. And then Murata had moments. Uh, obviously, the assist and the goal were two of his better moments. But there's still quite a few times where it seems like he's either turned off or he's not ready for it. And... I'll say in the second half there were several times where it felt like that, where it felt like people were on their heels, it's like we're reacting to it and we're too late to react. Uh, he was one of those players that it felt like he's there, he's in the right space, but he's not ready for it, he's not on his toes. And so the pass comes in, the defender's ready for it, they step in front of him, and now he doesn't have it, he's not putting in a good challenge. That happens a few too many times for me. And maybe it's just because I'm so used to Costa, who's constantly on and constantly putting pressure on the defense. But I think if he wants to continue to grow as a striker, if he wants to continue to be the main man and not have any challenge, he needs to make sure that he's working constantly and not just working when it's convenient for him. But, like I said, getting a goal and an assist, apparently he's the first ever Premier League player to get a goal and an assist in both of his uh in his first two home appearances, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, it's just, he's got to grow a bit more. He's still got to improve if he wants to be as good as some of these other strikers, you know, as good as Lukaku, as good as Kane. He's got to improve his game overall, uh, but I do like the work ethic from him, so. On to the subs. First one to come on was very late in the game, and I, I don't know, I, I didn't really mind the subs. I didn't really... I wasn't upset with them at all. In fact, they were pretty good subs when you really think about the circumstances of the game. However, I wanted to see Musonda. I wanted to see Tumori. I wanted to see Kennedy. I want to see those young players that are finally in the team. You know, they're a part of it. We're missing a few players through injury. This is a good chance for them to step up. They've not been involved. You know, Boga was there in the first game, but then had to get taken off because we went down a man. Musonda came on later, but at that point it was already like, it was very late in the game, and so he didn't have a whole lot of time to do much. So you really look at this, and none of our youngsters have really gotten that great of a chance. You know, Christensen is finally starting to get a better chance, and he played very well last week, which allowed him to get a sub in this week. But that's it. You know, none of our attacking players, none of our flair players are coming in, our young flair players, uh, and Musonda or Kennedy. I, I would have liked to see one of them get a chance. But as it stands, it, there were still some good subs. Uh, Pedro comes off, you know, still probably recovering from the injury a little bit. And like I said, I really wasn't impressed with him today. But Bakayoko comes in, 
which pretty much turns it into what it was last week against Tottenham, which is more of a kind of a 3-5-2 where he and Fabregas, well, last week it was he and David Luis and Conte. This week it was he, Fabregas, and Conte. Uh, once again, he and Conte are sort of interchanging on who drives forward and who stays back. So it really does work very well, and you know he came on, had a few good shots that were blocked, uh, and just big body in the midfield really helps. So I'm still impressed with him. Uh, he's still growing as a young player, I can see, but for the most part, I really like what he's doing. I like the effort he's putting in the midfield, and just the challenges that he puts in really holds down the midfield. You know, where Conte is more of a speedy, quick, nip the ball away, Bakayoko is a big, burly, I'm going to knock you off your feet and take the ball from you. Um, so really kind of like the the two of them working together, seeing their differences, but seeing how well they sort of complement each other. Uh, the next two subs, Batman comes on a few minutes after that sub for uh, Murata. At that point, you know, goal and assist, that's a good good thing to leave the field on. But he comes on and does fairly well. You know, moves a lot more than I saw him against Burnley or against Tottenham. Created a few good chances for himself. Got in behind on, a, on one occasion and was nearly through. But then the defender makes a good challenge and rolls through to the keeper. So his work ethic was a lot better tonight. I just feel like his movement was better. Overall, he was combining a lot more. I was really hoping he could get a goal to sort of shut all the people up who were constantly blasting him last week about his own goal. Uh... But, you know, I still think he's got a part to play. I still think he's a solid forward. He's just got to grow a bit more into the league. He's got to learn how to be a part of it while not waiting on people to do it for him. You know, trying to create more opportunities for himself. And then the last one was Christensen came on for Moses, uh, which pushes this really quite out to the right. I really hope this isn't going to be a constant thing where we see this in a few games where Spilicueta is out there on the right. I still think that, like I said before, he's better in the back three, but Christensen has been playing well as well as Rudiger, so it's kind of like you don't want to bench him completely and say, you know, oh, you're playing well, but we just got better players than you. You do want to give him a chance. I, I totally get that, uh, but I just don't want to see it at the expense of Espilio You know, I don't want to see it affect his game to the point where now he's sort of pushed off to the side and just not involved. But he came on, you know, didn't have a whole lot to do at that point. Everton were kind of looking to just counter with the speed up top and hope for the best. And Christensen, Rudiger, David Luiz all shut it down fairly well. So, But yeah, overall, like I said, it was a good game. It was a good result. But Everton really didn't bring it today. And I, from, from a Chelsea standpoint, I'm glad that we had such an easy run. I'm glad it was just, oh, easy to nothing, who cares. But at the same time, from an entertainment standpoint, you would have liked to see a more entertaining game. You would have liked to see Everton sort of go all out to try to take it to them. Chelsea, you know, going all out to hit it back at them. Creates a lot more goals. That's that's pretty much how we ended up with 5 nothing last year instead of 2 nothing. It's just the constant pressure from Everton and then hitting them on the break to score the 5. We didn't see that this year. This year was much more of a contained game. Everton was just trying to hold it in, looking very tired. So it wasn't as entertaining, but it was an easy win for us. Good way to end the first three matches. Obviously very disappointed now to go into the international break after two fairly good games back-to-back. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, but that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Who do you want to see us pick up before the transfer window shuts? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews. See you guys in the next game. Peace out.